Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here and we're going to go over how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. There's a couple different methods that you can use to solve um, these types of equations. However, uh, it's not going to tell you which method to use. And so you have to kind of decide by looking at it, does this method work, does this method work, and then kind of go from there. So let's start with how we solve some exponential equations. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the method of equating exponents. In order to equate exponents, we have to get the bases to be the same. So by looking at this first equation, 4 to the x equals 64, we can equate exponents because I can write this as 4 to the x, and I can also write 64 as 4 to the third. Now this is nice because I can sit there and say, all right, well this is easy. If 4 to the x equals 4 to the third, what's true about x and 3? And we can say that x equals 3, and that's our answer. 4 to the third equals 64. <clears throat> That's a pretty simple equation and a pretty simple solution. Down here we have another example. It says 100 to the 7x plus 1 equals 1,000 to the 3x minus 2. Well, you're like, well, 100 and 1,000, those are different bases. However, 100 is 10 squared, so it's 10 squared to the 7x plus 1, and 1,000 is 10 cubed, and then that would be raised to the 3x minus 2. Well now I have a power to a power, and so I'm going to have 10 to the 14x plus 2, don't forget to distribute to that 1, and 10 to the 9x minus 6. What do I do now? I have 10 to the 14x plus 2, 10 to the 9x minus 6. I can take that 14x plus 2, set it equal to 9x minus 6. Simple equation to solve. I get 5x equals negative 8. x then equals negative 8 fifths. And that's my solution. So that's how we equate exponents. First we get similar bases and then we set the exponents equal to one another. When we can't do that, for example here we have 4 to the x equals 11, I can't put 11 as a base of 4, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides, and really what I'd love to do is be able to take the log base 4 of 4 to the x, and the log base 4 of 11. Now why would I like to do that? Because the log base 4 of 4 to the x is just x, and that gives me an answer of log base 4 of 11. Now, if I don't have an inspire, I can't do this, and so I would have to use a change of base property and say log of 11 over log of 4. But if I do have an inspire, I could just do log base 4 of 11, and either way, I get an exact value here and an approximate value of 1.7297. There's my approximate answer, there's my exact answer, or there as well. Now, <clears throat> Since we don't always have an inspire that can do that, one of the other things I could do is just take the common log or natural log of 4 to the x and the common log or natural log of 11. And then <clears throat> what happens with an exponent? comes out front. We say x times log of 4, and that's equal to log of 11. Since it's x times log of 4, I can just divide both sides by log of 4 and again get log of 11 over log 4. And that's our exact answer. Plug it into your calculator and you're going to get 1.7297. Now here with <clears throat> 7 to the 9x equals 15, again if I wanted to I could take the log base 7 of 7 to the 9x and the log base 7 of 15. Um, and this uh, left side becomes 9x the right side is still log base 7 of 15. If I divide by 9, divide by 9, I get x equals log base 7 of 15 divided by 9. And that's my exact value, and then I plug it in my calculator and I get 0.1546. As I said earlier, if I don't have a graphing calculator that does log base B or whatever, I can just take the log of 7 to the 9x and the log of 15, 
take this exponent, pull it out front, and say 9x log 7 equals log 15. And now, <clears throat> 9 times x times log of 7, I can just divide by 9 log of 7, and I would get log of 15 over 9 log 7, because I would be dividing this side here by 9 log 7 and this side by 9 log 7. And again, that's 0.1546. So there's our two methods for solving exponential equations. Um, and we can also solve logarithmic equations using similar methods. Here we have log base 5 of 4x minus 7 equals log base 5 of x plus 5. Well, this is really easy because since the logs are the same, and that's all that's on each side, I can just drop the logs <clears throat> and get 4x minus 7 equals x plus 5. When I do that, I can solve this and get 3x equals 12 and x equals 4. Now one of the things that I should do is I should check and if I check I plug it back in and that does work out and so that's our answer. If you check and it doesn't work out, remember that you can't take the log of a positive number or a negative number I should say or 0, um, then you would have an extraneous solution. Same thing down here, we have the natural log of 7x minus 4 equals the natural log of 2x plus 11. So I drop the natural logs because the bases are the same and that's the only thing on each side. Set up 5x or 7x uh, minus 4 equals 2x plus 11. Subtract 2x from both sides, add 4 to both sides, and you get 5x equals 15 or x equals 3. And those are very easy to solve. The last form or the last method um, is putting it in, into exponential form. And here we have a single log here, log base 4 of 5x minus 1 equals 3. So if I put that into exponential form, I'm going to start with the base 4, raise it to the third power, and say it's equal to 5x minus 1. And so I'm going to have 4 cubed equals 5x minus 1. 4 cubed is 64, 5x minus 1. So or, uh, add 1 and I get 65 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5 and I get x equals 13. And so with x equaling 13, I plug it back in, it works out just fine, and that's my solution. Um, this last one I'm actually going to copy and paste onto the next page because it's going to be a little bit trickier, a little bit more work. Alright, so we get log of 5x plus log of x minus 1 equals 2. And so what I'm going to do is I see this addition. And when you see addition, that means multiplication. So we're going to say log of 5x times x minus 1, and that's equal to 2. When I multiply these, I actually get log of 5x squared minus 5x, and that's equal to 2. Now that I've simplified the log on the left side, I can write down the base as 10, so I can actually say 10 squared equals 5x squared minus 5x. Oops. Simplifying, I get 100 equals 5x squared minus 5x. Set it all equal to 0, and I get 5x squared minus 5x minus 100 equals 0. There's a 5 common in all the terms, so I say 5 and then x squared minus x minus 20. And now I need to factor. So I get 5, x minus 5, x plus 5, or x plus 4 I should say, and that's equal to 0, giving me answers of x equals 5 and x equals negative 4. Now that's a lot of work and we're not quite done yet because we need to check. And when I check, I get the log of 5 times 5 plus log of 5 minus 1. And that should be 2. Well, this is the log of 25 plus log of 4. All good still. That's the log of 25 times 4, which is 100, which is 2, and 2 equals 2, and that works out. Now when I check the other one, I get the log of 5 times negative 4, 
and that should send up a red flag right there. Negatives are bad news. Negative 4 minus 1. And when I do this, I get the log of negative 20, sorry for the sloppy writing, plus the log of negative 5. Now, right here is when I stop because I see I'm taking the log of negative 20 and the log of negative 5, and so that's not possible. All right, it's not in the domains. If you type it in on your calculator, log of 20, negative 20, it doesn't work. And so this right here is an extraneous solution, and so our only solution is x equals 5. So I hope that helped. We had uh, four different methods for solving exponential and logarithmic equations. I'll probably add another video with some more examples a little bit later on. And uh, good luck.